everyone. Welcome back to our physics class. So now the holidays are over, and I hope you people have enjoyed the holidays well. People are safe and healthy at home. So we will again come back to our studies part, and in physics we are going to begin with a chapter. We will actually continue with the chapter energy. If you remember before holidays, I had already started with this chapter. Energy. So please go through that topic thoroughly so that we can continue with the chapter energy. So first thing, if you remember in this chapter we had discussed about force, we had discussed about work, and then we had started with the energy. So definition of energy was the capacity of doing work is energy. So what is energy? It is the capacity of doing work, and the unit of energy and unit of work is same. So today we are going to talk about in detail about this topic energy. So first thing is there is an energy topic that is law of conservation of energy. What is this law of conservation of energy? The law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created. That means you cannot create a new form of energy. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, and you cannot destroy also energy. So if any energy is already present. You cannot destroy, and if energy is not there, you cannot create a new form of energy. It can only be converted from one form to another. So, what is basically conservation of energy? The law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created, it cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another form. Like suppose a very simple example if I take that of energy is sun. Okay, we people know that sun is the ultimate source of energy. Okay, so from sun we get heat energy, we get light energy, and this heat energy and light energy is used by plants to prepare their food. So by the process of photosynthesis. So over here what happens? One form of energy is getting converted into another form of energy. When you eat that food, your body absorbs that energy, and you people can do different different forms of work. So over here also one type of energy has been converted into another type of energy. So without eating food, when you people will able to get energy, you will not able to get energy because our body cannot create its own energy. It has to depend upon other things. So we depend upon food for energy, and food will depend upon basically photosynthesis process that will depend upon sun. So different different forms of energy depends upon different different things. So different forms of energy. So first type of energy is mechanical energy. So first thing you should know what is law of conservation of energy, and then we will talk about various types of energy. There is different forms of energy, and first kind of energy is mechanical energy. So what is mechanical energy? It is the sum of okay S U M sum. That means it is the addition. Of, it is the sum of potential energy. And kinetic energy. We will talk about this in detail. What is potential? What is kinetic? So first thing you should know what is mechanical energy. Mechanical energy means it is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy plus kinetic energy will be mechanical energy. Okay. So what is mechanical energy? It is the sum of potential energy and kinetic. So if a body is having potential energy, or body is having kinetic energy, or body possesses both potential and kinetic, both. So you will say that these bodies are having which kind of energy? Mechanical energy. So the sum that is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy is actually known as mechanical energy. So let us talk about these types of energy. That is potential energy and kinetic energy. So since mechanical energy is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy, the first type of energy and the mechanical energy is potential energy. So we should know what is potential energy. Potential energy, the energy possessed by our body. That means if a body is having which kind of energy, the type of energy which a body is having by a body by virtue of its position, because of its position or its configuration. So what is potential energy? The energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position or its configuration. 
that such kind of energy is known as potential energy. So, like suppose if I give example, then you will understand more in detail about potential energy. A raised hammer, if you purpose like steel hammer, suppose I have a scalp on the floor. At that time, it is not having any kind of energy because it is already just raised. But when you raise the hammer and then you will strike on the object, it will go into hit the object with a huge force. So, it will create a lot of impact on that object. So, what will happen when you raise that hammer to a height? On raising it to a height, what will happen? It will gain some amount of energy. And when you raise it to a height and it is gaining some kind of energy, then it is known as potential energy. So, this example of raising a hammer to a height is potential energy due to its position because the body has brought up to a certain position. Second thing, a stretched bow. So you must have seen a bow and arrow. In that system of bow and arrow, when you stretch the uh, thread or the string of the bow, or second example, over here stretched rubber also. So when you stretch a rubber band or elastic band, in that case you are changing its shape, that is configuration. And when you stretch that rubber band or when you stretch that bow, what will happen? It will again gain some kind of energy. And when it is gaining that energy, that energy is actually potential energy. And when you release, the arrow will come out with a huge amount of force. So over here, a stretched bow or a stretched rubber band is potential energy because of its configuration. Then water is stored in a dam. A simple example, water will be stored in your house also. You generally store the water tank on the terrace, that is at a height. So why you are storing it at a height? Because whenever the body is kept at a position, that is at a height, it will gain some energy. And which kind of energy it will store? It will store potential energy. So water is stored in a dam. When you open the doors of the dam, you find that water comes out with a huge force. Or suppose you place the water tank on the terrace, and when you open the tap at the bottom, you find that the water comes out with a huge force. So that is an example of potential energy. That means the water which was placed at a height, either at the dam or either in that water dam, that energy which was stored in that is known as potential energy. So over here, generally the objects are placed in the position of rest. So the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position or its configuration, then it is known as we can get the potential energy, and these are few examples. So how to relate a potential energy? Potential energy is related by E E or Capital U is also in sometimes. So this is how you can relate. Now potential energy depends upon three factors. Okay, potential energy depends upon three factors, and using those three factors, we can create the formula. So let us talk about these three factors and factors which affects the potential energy of of a body. So the factors on which the potential energy of a body depends. Potential energy of body depends upon first thing is the mass of the body. Means bigger the mass, body will have more amount of energy. Smaller the mass, the body will have smaller amount of energy. Second thing, the height through which it is raised from the ground. So if you are raising that object, like suppose if I take example of the hammer. So when you are raising the hammer, so if you want to apply small amount of force, you just raise the hammer to a small height. But when you have to huge, you have to apply a large amount of force. In that situation, we have found that we apply, we raise the hammer to a great height. So more height, more amount of potential energy. Less height, less amount of potential energy. Water falls from a huge height. In that situation, we will find that water is falling with a huge amount of force. Like suppose if I take example of water falls. So generally, water falls are at a great height. So when water is falling from that height, it will have huge amount of force also. It will have more amount of potential energy. And third thing is the gravity. So, gravity of the earth, wherever we are taking example, that is gravity. So, three factors are there, and using those three factors, we can use the formula, we can apply the formula of potential energy. So the formula of potential energy is mass into gravity into height, m into g into h. So, formula of potential energy becomes m into g into h, and the factors of which the potential energy of a body depends upon is these three factors. Mass of the body, the height through which it is raised from the ground, and third one is the gravity. And unit 
since it is a type of energy, the unit of original energy will be joule. Okay. So since we have understood what is potential energy, now we will talk about one factor based on potential energy so that things will become easier for you. A leaning star of Pisa is 45 meter high. So what is the height of the star? So it marks the part height that is h is equal to 45 meter. A mass of 4 kg is dropped. What is the mass? How much is the mass? Mass that is m is 4 kg is dropped from the top. Calculate its potential energy at the top and the force of gravity is already given 10 newton per kg. Okay, so we have to calculate the potential energy. The formula of potential energy is m into g into h. How much is the mass? 4 kg into gravity. 10 meter per kg. Into height is 45 meter. Multiply 
my pass and then multiply by 1 upon 2 that is half then you will get the kinetic energy and the unit is same as 2 so we will talk about all numericals so that you can easily understand what is actually kinetic energy so let us talk about one numerical that is based on kinetic energy so you can understand the process of phenomena of kinetic energy a body of mass 4 kg, so that is one body whose mass is 4 kg is moving with velocity of 5 meter per second. So what is given in the question? Mass of body, because the kinetic energy is required to be two things, that is mass and the speed or the velocity. So mass of body is 4 kg and the velocity with which it is moving is actually 5 meter per second. You have to calculate the kinetic energy. So the formula of kinetic energy is R into m into v square or R m v square. Half into what is the mass of the body? 4. Into velocity is 5. And you have to square it. Remember, you have to square it, it is very important. Because it is v square, so 5 square. So first I am going to square it half into 4 into 5 square is 25 because 5 5 is a 25. Now you simply divide it 2 1 the 2, 2 2 is a 4. 25 2 is a 50 and the kinetic energy will become 50 joules. So here this is how you have to find out the kinetic energy of the moving body. So two things are very important. You have to look for in the question. First thing is the mass. Second thing is the velocity and then you can calculate the kinetic energy of any moving object. So this is how you have to solve the questions. Then after this we are going to begin with different forms of energy other than mechanical energy.